So this is my 29th year working at Mayo Clinic. And I've been fortunate to have a variety of leadership responsibilities both within Mayo and outside of Mayo Clinic. I've helped start our Center for Innovation, this conference, I'm very proud of that. You've heard, I've quartered a few things. I've helped lead the team that started the Center for Individualized Medicine, bringing genomics into the practice, and now I'm the CEO of Mayo Clinic in Florida. And so I've experienced a lot of change, and I've instigated a lot of change. So you think that when it comes to this topic, I have a real lot to say, and I, I actually feel I do, but I'm also acutely aware that when it comes to the broad strokes, the broad strokes of leading to change, then a lot of very good authors have written a lot of very good books about the subject. And I really don't want to add more broad strokes, and I don't want to repeat those broad strokes. So what I thought I'd do in my time is actually focus on one aspect of leading to change. It's something I experience, and I'm assuming you also experience. It's a gap, and a growing gap, between what you learn about leadership and then what you experience as a modern, empathetic, listening leader. So we're all familiar with different leadership styles. Listed a few here. All of them have their pros and all of them have their cons. Laissez-faire is probably an exception. I'm sure somebody put it in there so you can say something bad about the form of leadership and then talk about the rest. So laissez-faire bad, we'll leave that one alone. You'll see servant leadership in the bottom. Servant leadership as a philosophy <coughs> has been around forever. But it's only in the last years that it's been codified as a leadership style. And more importantly, it's only the last few years that more and more organizations are gravitating towards it as a favorite leadership style for their organization. And that is certainly the case at Mayo Clinic. We want, we expect our leaders to be servant leaders. And in fact, if you're not a servant leader at Mayo Clinic, you're going to fail, and you're going to fail fast. So, servant leaders. So servant leaders, of course, are people who put others above themselves. Servant leaders are there to inspire. Servant leaders are there to empower others to unlock their full potential. Servant leaders are there to inspire trust, to give people courage. And when a servant leader does that, then you as an employee feel more empowered, you make better decisions, you feel happier, the organization does better, consumers gravitate towards that organization, or in our case, patients get better care. So that's a servant leader. So hold that thought for a moment, and let me just switch gears to change agents. So a change agent is somebody who takes ideas and tactics and pushes them through the bureaucracy of an organization. And irrespective of how nimble your organization is, there's going to be a bureaucracy. It's just part of an, any organization. So change agents are unhappy with legacy thought processes. Change agents are unhappy with status quo. Change agents are impatient with the pace of change. By definition, a change agent is an outlier. If you happen to think exactly like each one of your colleagues, you are not a change agent. Yeah. Nowadays, we expect each one of you, each one of us, anybody in a leadership position to be a change agent. Why? There are many reasons for it, but probably Gary Hamill hit on something really important where he said that change itself has changed. So while change has always been disruptive, you could really sort of peer over the horizon, see change coming and react to it. Now, you can't. Not only the pace has changed, but there are many different horizons, many different directions. You as a leader have to now anticipate change and then react to that change. So change agents have to have speed, have to have focus, they have to have clarity. So it seems like we've done this. We've created a conflict between expecting most leaders to be servant leaders and all leaders to be change agents. And that is what I want to talk to you about today. But I'm not going to talk about the conflict, because indeed that's the case. If we want to change healthcare, we've got to be servant leaders and we have to be change agents. So it's how can you do it? And one important initial step is to understand it's not only about who a servant leader is, or what a servant leader does, or who a change agent is, and what a change agent does. 
but rather it's also about clearly defining what a servant leader is not and what a change agent is not. And to make that point, I'm just going to give a case study. And the case study I'm going to use is this one. This is where we need to get to. So we need to get to a point where both are working together to achieve what we want to achieve, transforming healthcare. This building. This building is currently going up on our campus in Mayo Clinic in Florida. In 2015, we embarked on an envisioning exercise that was part of the overall Mayo Clinic strategic plan and we reaffirmed our identity as a destination medical center for the Southeast. We're happy that patients had great outcomes and that patients in general had a good experience. But it was clear that to be a true destination medical center, we had to see more patients. You cannot be a destination if you're not seeing enough patients. And to see patients, you have the people <coughs> to see them, you need to make sure you have the right technology, and of course, you'd still need the space. So Christina Zorn, my administrative partner and I, put together a task force, the right sort of task force, with people from the Center for Innovation, facilities, nurses, doctors, others came, and, and they, over a period of several months, they came forward with a five to six year plan. And that five to six year plan had us constructing this building you see here in orange, next to this road, and move our family medicine and general medicine into that building, why? Because now, for patients who need to come in for a short visit, you can come from the road, park easily, not have to go to the rest, rest of campus, and then leave. And at the same time, we could then backfill the rest of the campus with what we needed, which is more um, um, complex subspecialty care. So we took that plan to the board, and the board enthusiastically approved it. But in the weeks to the time when it got approved, we began to see a marked increase in the influx of patients who were coming to see us. And it became clear that we did not have five to six years. So Christina and I, in the classic congratulations but, had to go back to that same group and say, congratulations, but we have a problem. We have patients who have cancer, patients who have neurosurgical needs, patients who have neurological needs, they need to see us. We can't wait five to six years. We've got to get this done in two to three years. As you can expect, there was a lot of silence. And so we said, OK, look, let's wait three weeks. Let's meet again in three weeks. Somehow we're going to figure out how to do this together. And that's where something truly magical happened. In those three weeks, we received several proposals from that same group coming up with different solutions for the problem. And when we met three weeks later, picked the best parts of those, and a week later, we had this. This is the, where the building currently is. It's going to be open in less than a year, and it's going to be able to cope with 1, 000, 126,000 patient visits a year. So how did this happen? How did a group of people that were completely invested in their plan, how did they pivot? How did they pivot so fast and do it with no leadership, leadership input at all? This had nothing to do with Christine and myself. So as we talked to them, we realized a couple of things. One is that they felt trusted. And two, is they had completely bought into the vision of the place. They had bought into the vision as a destination medical center and bought into the fact that at Mayo Clinic, the needs of the patient come first. So when we talked to them, there was no pivot. For them, there was no pivot at all. It was like, OK, we have new information. We're going to deal with it, and we're going to move on. And that brings me to the first do nots. So, as a servant leader who needs to be a change agent, certainly in healthcare, but anywhere, you need to be able to articulate a clear vision. And you need to, be able to articulate a vision that is as clear as a photograph on a bright, sunny day. In fact, as a servant leader, you've got to do this more than any other form of leadership style. Why? Because in any other form of leadership style, it doesn't matter. You're going to do it anyway. But here, you're relying on other people to feel empowered to get things done. And therefore, you have to have that clear vision and you have to keep articulating it. Here's my second do not do's. The second do not do is data dump. I catch myself doing this all the time. I'm trying hard to be a servant leader. I want to make sure you have all the information that I have. But there's a problem with that. As a leader, I'm paid to think about the worst. 
I'm always paid to think about the possibility that Congress won't pass something or that a disaster will strike somewhere else and it will affect us. That's my job and that's what I'm supposed to do and then create mitigating circumstances. But I can do that because it's my only job. When you data dump, what you're doing is you're spreading your fears to others. You're not inspiring, you're paralyzing. <coughs> and you're certainly not empowering. So as a servant leader, as a change agent, you've got to keep articulating that clear vision and then give the right information that is relevant to the decision that is being made. But you can't data dump if you want to be a change agent. This starts off as looking like a third don't do, but it's actually a do. And the do is understand the meaning of no. So sometimes no means no. If any of you had to come to our board and say, great idea, let's co-brand Mayo Clinic with weight loss supplements, we're going to make a ton of money, we will invest in patient care. The answer you're going to get is no, and there's no context to that no. It's a firm no. It doesn't fit our culture, it doesn't fit who we are, we're just simply not going to do it. That's no. But most of the time, no has to be taken in the context of the time that the decision was made and the data that were used to make that decision. So, as a change agent who's also a servant leader, think of yourself as tied to your organization, whatever organization it is, as tied to the organization with a rubber band. If you pull a little, the rubber band stretches and you don't move. Think of that as your first no. Pull a lot and the rubber band snaps and the organization still doesn't move. That's your definitive no. But in any organization, you're tied with a rubber band whose strength varies from day to day, from week to week, and certainly from month to month. And therefore, you as a servant leader who wants to change, You've got to make sure you understand that you have two things to do. The first is strengthen the rubber band. How do you do that? Not by simply being a servant leader when there's a tough decision to be made, but it's within those micro decisions that hap happen every day in your organization. And you all have the ability to if affect that, that change, and you also all have the ability to strengthen that rubber band every single day so that when you really need to pull on it, you can do that. But secondly, you've got to understand the strength of the rubber band. You've got to look and see the strength of that rubber band. So we in Florida, like everybody else in Florida, in Jacksonville, we were hit by Hurricane Irma. A lot of our patients, some of our staff, had structural damage to their houses, lots of flooding. If the day after the hurricane, I went to the group of people and said, you know, here's a great new, brand new idea, let's talk about, let's see if, we're going to get it, if we can get it done it's extremely likely it was not going to be received well. On the other hand, the same idea. If we just happen to be planning months and months of planning for either a complex multi-organ transplant or something really complex that required us to have hundreds of people in the OR and we succeeded, everybody's happy, that same concept <coughs> then would be received very differently. So you as a servant leader, as a change agent, need to understand when's the right time to pull after you've strengthened the rubber band. The second and last do is you have to lead now. We get into this a lot because we're servant, you're trying to be a servant leader and therefore you want to make sure the timing is right. There are a group of young, new leaders that are maturing, so you think, well, if, they, if I wait a little bit, they're going to be better. And then you look at yourself and I think I'm a stronger leader now than I was two years ago. So imagine how much better I'm going to be in a year's time. So why not wait? Or last week was a pretty rough week for me. So perhaps this is not the right time. But you've got to remember that the same way you empower others to lead, you've got to also empower yourself to lead now. And that a good idea a year from now is probably also a good idea today. And therefore, if you make sure you do not abdicate on your responsibility to articulate a clear vision, if you make sure that you don't data dump, if you work hard at strengthening that rubber band and pulling it at the right time, and if you lead now, you actually can be a great 
servant leader who's a, who's a great change agent. I'll end with this, which is that I firmly believe that actually servant leaders are the best forms of change agents. And if you want to change healthcare, you need to be a servant leader. Why? Because when you make change, it's on a bedrock of support. It's much more likely to happen, it's much more likely to last, and it's much less likely to be reversed. So servant leaders are the best form of change agents. Thank you. <laughs>